the statistically significant, if you will, uh, eigenvalues versus the non-statistically significant eigenvalues. And I'm going to prepare another video to demonstrate how to do this Monte Carlo simulation approach. It's quite simple to do it. Unfortunately, SBSS doesn't do it in an automated way. You need to do it through syntax. So based on this screen plot, I'm going to extract two uh, eigenvalues for my analysis. So that's why I have to do it in two steps. I'm going to go into Analyze again, Dimension Reduction Factor, Extraction, and now I'm going to fix the number of factors to two. Uh, and I'm going to keep the uh, scree plot because uh, I typically would save my output, so I'm going to keep the screen plot. And you can see up here method principal components. That's the default in SPSS. There are a number of other common factor analysis approaches to uh, estimating the uh, factor solution. Uh, but in this case, I've chosen principal components analysis. I don't want to go into too much detail about the differences between the two. Uh, theoretically, there are some pretty profound differences between them uh, in terms of the estimation of the parameter estimates in the uh, factor solution. Sometimes you can get differences, uh, and there are some systematic differences, but I'm not going to go into detail with that right now. So I'm going to click Continue. I'm also going to get the descriptives because I want to look at my correlation matrix. You should always look at your correlation matrix. Uh, and you can get your KMO Bartlett's test of sphericity to tell you whether you should actually be uh, doing a component analysis or a fa factor analysis to begin with. Uh, and I would typically want to look at my univariate descriptives in any case. I won't spend a lot of time on that. I'm just showing a brief demonstration how to all of these uh, options here um, are fairly interesting actually, particularly the reproduced. Uh, correlation matrix if you wanted to create a, um, a histogram of the uh, difference between the estimated between the observed correlations and the uh, reproduced correlations which is your residual correlation matrix um, anyway I'll, maybe I'll do some separate videos on that continue uh, rotation this is important uh, in my opinion, you'll always want to choose direct oblomen. Now, direct oblomen is a uh, approach to producing a oblique factor rotation, and that means that the factor solution, the the, um, the factors, can be actually correlated with each other. So, if you choose Verimax, that's an orthogonal rotation procedure, and the factor solution will be forced to be orthogonal. Uh, and I think uh, a lot of educated people in the area, uh, and people have used the analyses a lot, choose direct oblomen because it's the best, best of both worlds. If the factor solution that is the most appropriate is an orthogonal uncorrelated factor solution, then the direct oblomen solution, uh, then the direct oblomen factor rotation procedure will yield a r more or less oblique uh, orthogonal uh, factor solution. But in most cases, in reality, uh, in nature, there will be some correlation between factors or components. And direct oblomen will estimate that. Uh, and so will Promax. Uh, but I, I choose direct oblomen. Uh, I don't think there's usually very much differences between the two. Uh, so the rot I'm going to display the rotated solution. I've chosen direct oblomen, which will allow for correlations between the two components that I've extracted that I'm extracting. So click on continue. Uh, another option here that's good is you want to sort your components, uh, your, your factor loadings or your component loadings more accurately in this case. People often choose, uh, it's going to be sorted by size, uh, which makes it much easier to interpret a component uh, pattern matrix. Uh, and suppress small co coefficients, I never do that. I think you should always have uh, information in your, in your uh, factor table, pattern matrix table. You should look at it. Why would you want to uh, exclude that? So click Continue and click OK. And here's the output. So the first table that uh, SPSS calls it a factor analysis. This is technically a component analysis. It's just uh, the language that factor analysis uses. So we can see that CIN, the, the listed investment company called Carlton Investments, has on average a discount to its net asset values of negative 13.46, and it's the biggest of the uh, the nine listed investment companies that I'm looking at, and we have a, uh, we have some that c fairly reliably and consistently trade at a premium, 
including uh, Argo, this is uh, ARG, Argo Investments, uh, 